Good morning, everyone. It's time to get our worship on, y'all. Y'all, do y'all know that I almost did not even set up back chairs just so I could see more people, but I see we're setting up more. <laughs> Hey, some habits are just thing. I understand. You know what? This thing rolls. <laughs> anyway, it's great to see everybody here today. I want to cover a few announcements before we get into worship. Uh, don't forget today we're taking up uh, the special offering for the manna ministry that our community does and many of y'all are church involved in. Uh, you can put your offering, extra offering, in the uh, box there and just make a note on there that it is for the manna. Uh, also, what happens next Sunday? Okay, we start at 4 o'clock with a meal, hanging of the greens at 530 those of you that have volunteered, if at all possible, we need to practice next Saturday, 11 o'clock. And I've already seen that that will not interfere with something that's happening next Saturday. I can't remember. What is it that's happening? <laughs> also, uh, I wanted to share with y'all, I don't know if you know it, but I, I produce these if y'all want them. I, I don't produce a lot. Because I know some folks don't use them. But these are an outline of the sermon if you like to keep notes uh, to help you with that. Well, if there are no other announcements today, again, I want to thank you all for coming. And also just to remind you that today, and I'll talk, be talking more about it in the sermon. But today is a very special day in the life of the church. It has been set aside as Christ the King Sunday where we focus before Advent on the majesty and glory and splendor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so with that in mind, as we sing the songs today, think of singing those songs as being around that great throne and praising Jesus. Because that's what we're here to do, right? to worship and to praise and to hear about him and to grow in our faith. And so uh, I encourage you just to sing uh, with the love in your heart that you have for Jesus. But let's pray first. Father, we just gather in this place in your name to worship you and to adore you and to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and what he has done for us. And we ask, O oh God, that by the anointing of your Holy Spirit, you would speak to our hearts in this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everybody. Glad to see you all here this morning. Let's stand and sing today as we come to worship. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one. with one accord every praise every praise is to our God every praise is to our God every 
gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. And on and on and on and on it goes Before it overwhelms and satisfies my soul And I never ever have to be afraid Cause one thing remains Yes, one thing remains Your love it never gives up, it never runs out on me Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out Aren't you glad his love never gives up? This morning as we are sharing this Apostles' Creed, especially in lieu of what I'm going to be preaching on today, I want you to really pay attention to the words you're saying about who Jesus Christ was, is, and will forever be. So let us join together in that historic affirmation of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle
breath till that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angel stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born and the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth Thank you, praise team, for leading us into the presence of God. Before we have prayer time, the couple of things I want you just to be aware of, to be praying for and to be thinking about. Uh, first of all, I for neglected to mention last Sunday in this worship service that our beloved uh, church uh, administrator, secretary, whatever you want to call Gina, is retiring uh, the end of December and we now already have hired and she is working be trained Miss uh, Miss Keek uh, excuse me <laughs> Lisa is going to be the new secretary Lisa Wickham so we're excited about that she's already in training and she's uh, really is training on how to deal with me isn't that right <laughs> she's going <laughs> also for those of you that are watching today we also hope that you feel part of this worship service and when we enter into prayer that you enter into prayer with us in this time and one of the prayer requests that I've been asked to mention this morning she she held back but called me last night and told me to go ahead and share with y'all y'all may have noticed, noticed that Rachel Stewart has not been here in a while Rachel has several, she said, collapsed vertebrae in her neck. She's in a lot of pain, and she's going to be having surgery December the 10th, unless they can move it up. Uh, and also, we give thanks, though, that uh, our brother Stephen went this week, and he is not going to have to have back surgery. They're going to deal with his issue a little bit different, so we can give God the glory for that. But anyway, just want to update you on those few things, and let's go to the Lord together in a time of prayer. Gracious God, we just come before you today, and Lord, I thank you for every person that is here or online that has come to gather to worship you and to hear from you and to sing praises to your name. For Lord, you are indeed worthy to be praised. For you are God who never gives up, whose kingdom is forever whose reign is assured, and through your Son, Jesus Christ, we know that in him we will have victory over all things that would try to drag us down or pull us away. And so, God, one of the things I would pray for all of us today is to strengthen our faith. Lord, for our world really does, as the evil one tries, to pull us away, to push boundaries and to make us think negatively. But God let us hang on to your son Jesus. For as we talk about the day. He, you have granted him to be the king of kings. And lord of lords. And through him we can overcome. Forgive us O God of our doubts. Forgive us O God of our sin. Forgive us O God of our neglect. And help us to be more and more like your son Jesus, and to claim our identity in him. Lord, this morning, <clears throat> we lift up the concerns of our, of our congregation and our world to you. 
Lord, we pray for Rachel and what she's going through and pray for healing for her. Uh, we continue to pray for others that will be mentioned in a minute that are still dealing with health issues. I pray, God, also uh, for those as we enter into the holiday season that may not have a lot of family to gather with, that they would still recognize that they are loved. And so, God, I want to be quiet a minute now that my brothers and sisters can lift up the names of people that are on their hearts or to give praise to you for what you've done. So hear my brothers and sisters as they become part of this prayer. Staff and children, my mom, Pat Davenport, Evelyn Musket, Scott Jones, and Andrew Tanner. My cousin, Kyle Ray. Susan Blaine Nelson. Sister Nita. The Albert Woods family. Craig Pruitt, who is still recovering after three months from COVID and pneumonia. The family of Carrie Phillips, Brett Yancey, Joe Hood, and Chuck Moore. Pray for the ones hurting this morning of some kind of sickness. Um, pray that, that they'll get better. And we pray for the people that don't know our Lord and Savior. And then we pray for the people that do know him and don't take the time to work with him. I have a phrase, um, these last two cancer treatments have been extremely rough on Gail, but yesterday she was feeling much better and she had a bit more energy. So hopefully this was her last cancer treatment and will go on with alternative uh, treatments hereafter. Any others? I'd like for us to pray for our church, our pastor, and our country as all three are navigating some pretty difficult times. Thank you. I have a prayer this morning. I want to thank God for helping my uh, stepdad get through his finals in college. He just went back to college for the first time in 20 years, and he's finally becoming a great. Wow, uh, awesome. And Lord, I will lift up my mom and dad. I thank you that they got to come down yesterday. But Lord, I, as you know, I remember when they were so vibrant and to see my mom just struggling to walk. And so I just pray for the elderly who struggle to even navigate simple tasks every day. And may they know that they're loved and may those of us who are younger support them in any way we can. And now, Lord, I just ask that you be with this congregation and you would anoint me with your presence as I preach this message about the glory and splendor of your Son who deserves our highest praise and adoration. And in whose name we make this prayer. Amen. Okay. Today. Don't the presenting that that's just something we I left in by accident. We do have our box there if you want to place your offering. But we're going to use two different scriptures today. Some that have been in my class know one of them. Uh, but. First of all, let me ask you this. Where, what part of the Bible is the book of Daniel in? The Old Testament. So therefore, what we're going to be reading is a vision that Daniel is given about the future. 
Now, Revelation, where is it? It also is going to be about a vision that Jesus has already partly assumed and part later to assume. But first, follow me with the Daniel 7 text. As I, I watched, his thrones were put into place in the ancient one, that is God the Father, sat down to judge. His clothing was as white as snow, his hair like white as wool. He sat on a fiery throne with wheels of blazing fire. And the river of fire flowed from his presence. Millions of angels ministered to him. And a hundred million stood to attend him. Then the courts began its section, session and the books were open. So see the, see the scene. God the Father on the throne. Millions of angels. And this is the vision Daniel see. All right. Next slide. Okay, wait a minute. There's a part of that I messed up. I am not good with PowerPoint lately. Millions of angels stood to attend him. Then the court began its session and the books were open. Now listen to this part. As my vision continued that night, I saw one, someone who looked like a son of man coming with the clouds. He approached the ancient one and was led into his presence. He was given authority and honor and royal power over all the nations of the world so that people of every race and nation and language obey him. And then it says this. His rule is eternal. It will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. So that is the vision Daniel has in the Old Testament. Now let's look into Revelation this letter is from John to the seven churches in the province of Asia. Grace and peace to the one from, who, from the one who is, who always was, and who is to come. From the sevenfold spirit before his throne and from Jesus Christ, who was the faithful witness to these things. The first to rise from the dead. The commander of all of the rulers of the world. All praise to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by the shedding of his blood for us. He has made us to be a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. For I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and is to come, the Almighty. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have y'all ever been to a really elaborate party where people really like maybe men wear tucks and women wear evening dresses and it's super fancy. Have y'all ever been to one of those? I would not do good in one of those. Because, you know, you go to those places and they got all these forks and they got their knives and they got their plates. And Y'all, I'm, I'm a lint head. And trying to know which fork to use when, I mean, I'm just not good at that. I am who I am, and that's just it. So if Bridget and I ever go to them, I'm going to have to watch her, because she knows what to do. I don't. <laughs> so when you go to these elaborate parties, these shindigs, as I call them, uh, the kind I'm thinking of would be kind of like something happens every four years when the president gets elected and there's a big presidential ball and everyone who's on the victor's side shows up and has this grand party. But did you know, according to the Bible, there has been a greater party than that, a grander thing that has already occurred in heaven. When the Lord Jesus Christ, as we know, died and was raised from the dead, but later he ascended 
back to the right hand of God the Father, where he sat down to assume a place he had already had before time was even created. For he was the eternal Son of God who left that great place of power, was born into a manger that we're about to start talking about, and over the, the, the next several weeks we'll be focusing and thinking about and singing songs about. But what is really awesome, and we have to remember this, that he left the glory of heaven as the eternal Son of God. But when he ascended back to heaven, Daniel foresaw this vision of one like a son of man. Meaning the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God and the Son of Mary, who approaches the throne of God Almighty the Father, and God the Father grants him authority and rule and forever and ever is his name. Amen? And for that reason, ever since I've become a pastor, I really like to honor this special day in the life of the church. Because it's really, if you know much about the way the Christian year goes, next Sunday is the really the first Sunday of the new Christian year. We don't go from January to December. We go from Advent to Christ the King Sunday. So today represents really the Christian year. And a lot of people will be preaching messages about Thanksgiving, and there's nothing wrong with that. But to me, there, there's, there's got to be some Sunday where we just remember the glory and splendor and who our Lord is. And so there's a few points I want to make today about who this is with Jesus Christ and what God has done for him. And the first of all, when we speak about the reign of Jesus, you need to remember that God the Father has granted God the Son his kingdom. The Old Testament and the New Testament affirms this. Now, I got to thinking as working on this sermon, is where is one of the first hints that we hear about Jesus going to have an eternal kingdom? Can y'all think of one? Second Samuel. David. Y'all remember who King David is. He's going to, wants to build a temple for God. But God says, no, you're not going to be the one to do it. You've shed too much blood. And here's what God says to Daniel. But when you die, I will raise up one of your descendants and will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who will build a house, a temple for my name. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Your dynasty and your kingdom will continue from, for all time before me and your throne will be secure. Now, in some ways you could say that's talking about his son, King Solomon. Because Solomon would build an earthly temple. But this scripture has bigger meaning than that. God is talking about someone who would build or would live into a greater temple. A temple that Jesus said, tear this temple down and I will rebuild it. And we know that Solomon only lived a certain amount of time. But God promised David that one of your descendants would sit on the, your throne forever. And Jesus Christ is the descendant on the human side of David. And then we saw a while ago that Daniel saw this vision of one who ascended and approached the throne. He came through clouds and Daniel was seeing into the future of what happened in Acts chapter 1. Remember what happened there? Jesus ascended back into heaven, right? And so Daniel gets to see that. A time where the fulfillment of Psalms 110 comes to being. Where it says, I saw, it says this. Son, the son, the father said to the son, sit at my right hand until all of your enemies have been subdued. God has given Jesus this great honor. Secondly, this kingdom is very different 
from most any other kingdom in the world. Kingdoms are built on power and force. And most, in most kingdoms, the rulers rule safe and secure, but their subjects are the ones that die. But we know something very different about this kingdom, that this kingdom, the king died for his subjects. Remember what we read a while ago from Revelation. All praise to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by the shedding of his blood for us. The reason why Christ took on human flesh is so he could die for us. And therefore, we have been bought with a price and we become his kingdom. Also, that what is so different about this kingdom is it's built on love and kindness rather than power and might. Y'all remember the place where Jesus goes before Pilate in John's gospel. And Pilate asks Jesus, So you're the king? You're the king? And Jesus says, yes, but my kingdom is not of this world. For if it was, my followers would come and defeat you. You see, Jesus' king is, kingdom is different. Worldly kingdoms are built on patriot and all that. But think about the way Jesus, when he rode into Jerusalem... Before he was crucified on Palm Sunday, what did he ride in on? A donkey. Now, I could go a whole big thing about Daniel on that. Those of you in my Daniel class know what I'm talking about. But the riding in of a donkey shows that Jesus' kingdom is different. And point three, both of the Daniel and the Revelation text Prove that Jesus' kingdom is eternal and it will be victorious. What is so cool, if you really spend time in Daniel, is God throughout the book, and we talked about this past week, there's three different times where God shows Daniel about these world kingdoms. The Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, and the Roman empires. That all four of these empires would come into place before they came into place. And all four would fall. Yet, the eternal one's reign would be forever. It's just like that famous song says, Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. But there's something about that name. So what does it matter? It matters because despite what all the junk we see in our world. That Christ is still on his throne. And he knows everything that's going on. It's under his control. He's allowing things to happen for reasons we don't fully understand. But the, the Bible tells us from the Revelation text. It says this about Jesus. And everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the nations will mourn and weep because of him. Who is mourning and who is weeping? Christians wouldn't be mourning and weeping. They would be excited. It's all of those who refuse to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior throughout history and who persecuted him and his church. And why will they be mourning and weeping? Because they will realize finally that he is who he said he is. The King of kings and Lord of lords. And he will, and just as Paul said, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. But there'll be mourning because it is now eternally too late. They will realize they have messed up and they have sealed their fate because the Bible says clearly that Jesus will stand victorious 
over all who ever stood against him. Point four. This kingdom is a shared kingdom. Most people in power want to keep that power. We see that in our nation right now. And that's nothing new. We act like it's something new. But if you look in, the, in, in history, a lot of kings that would come to power, even queens, anybody that they thought were their adversaries, because they don't want anybody interfering with them. But Revelation 1 verse 6 says this. He has made us his kingdom and his priests to serve before God. Christ shares his kingdom with you and with me if we belong to him. We become far, part of this royal family. And so through Christ we will have and reign over all the enemies of God. And God, what is so interesting, and we got to make this point, is that all that are the enemies of God chose to stay enemies of God. Jesus came to, a, to, to try to make and reconcile everybody to God. God doesn't want any human being to be his enemy. But if they refuse him, then they have sealed their fate. But when you accept him, you become Jesus' temple. So, let me kind of wrap this up. Three quick things, though. I can, you know, sermons like this are great theological truths. But I don't know about y'all, but when I went to growing up, if I had a preacher that gave me all these great theological truths, that was great. I learned something. But I walked away with thinking, well, okay, so what? What does that mean for me? First of all, it means we need to make sure we are on his side. I met with a group of pastors at the district office past Thursday, and our district superintendent shared a devotional about boundary markers. And he led into the fact that over time, Satan has been pushing boundary markers more and more and more. Or another way of looking at it is, he's not just pushed the envelope, he's tore the envelope open. Because Satan seeks to kill and destroy. He wants to tear down people, he wants to tear down nations, he wants to tear down churches, and he wants to tear down individuals. And far too long we Christians have stood back and let him have his way. So it seems like he's winning. But 1 Corinthians 15 says this. Christ was raised first and when Christ comes back all of his people will be raised. After that the end will come and he will turn the kingdom over to the Father having put down all enemies of every kind. For Christ must reign until he humbles his enemies beneath his feet. So what does this mean? According to what we've read from Daniel, what we've read from Revelation, that God has given Jesus the kingdom. Jesus is trying to subdue his enemies through first, through conversion, to help them to get saved. But if they don't, and they refuse him, one day, then when Jesus returns, all of his enemies will choose, basically, have chosen to be destroyed. For the Bible clearly says that Satan and his demons and all of those whose names are not, are not written in the book of life will be destroyed because they refused God's offer of grace. What I don't understand is why anybody would want to be on any other side except for Jesus' side. It makes no sense to me. Secondly, we must crown him king of kings and lord of lords in our lives. That means, first of all, you accept him as, as your savior. And you don't argue with what he has said in his word. If he says it's a sin, 
It's a sin. You don't argue with him and say, you don't know what you're talking about. He said it. You go with it. But it also means accept him as Savior, agreeing with him. It means making him the Lord of your life. Letting him influence every decision you make. It means giving him your total allegiance. Now, if you know much about history, when kings would take over, there was two ways they would get allegiance. One was what nobody wants. The harsh, cruel way. If you don't obey me, you will be tortured and you will be killed. And so they forced people into allegiance. But the kind of leaders that most people like is the kind of leaders that some kings were that would go into the battle with their soldiers, that would take care of their soldiers, who put the needs of the people first. And those kind of people were the kind of people that the soldiers and the people would follow anywhere that person wanted to go. Well, that's the way Jesus is. He has given of himself by giving himself on the cross and dying for us. And lastly, I want to share this with you. We need to recognize our importance in Jesus' kingdom. The Revelation text said this. He has made us a kingdom, his kingdom. In other words, you get born again, you become part of his kingdom, the Holy Spirit lives within you. And then it says, and his priest who serve forever before God his Father. Give to him everlasting glory. He rules forever and ever. Remember last week, church, when we, we talked about that the church is the bride of Christ, the body of Christ. But we are also children of the king through his acceptance in him. And through Christ we become prince and princesses. In his kingdom. Jesus not only made us priests. I mean uh, princes and princesses. But he also says he made us priests. Remember in the Old Testament. The priests were the people. That represented God to the people. Well what, God, what the Revelation text is saying. Is that you. Through faith. Become a priest. You get to represent a lost world to Jesus and Jesus to the lost world. You become the bridge builder. For 1 Peter 2.9 says this. You are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. A holy nation. A people belonging to God. That you may declare the praises of him. Who called you out of darkness into his wonderful life. Jesus is the king. And you are appointed as part of the royal priesthood. Which means Jesus wants to, can and will bring others into his kingdom through you. If you are willing. And so it all boils down to this. We've said this all about what he, who he is. And what it means for our life. But it all boils down to, is he in our lives? That manger, to grow up in poverty, to die on the cross, that we might have eternal life. But Lord Jesus, we're also thankful that you now sit at the right hand of the fathers, the King of kings and Lord of lords, where you also act act as our great high priest. Lord, forgive us when we have not taken the responsibility to be priests ourselves. And Lord, when we feel discouraged and defeated by the world around us, let us be reminded that through faith in you, we will have the victory. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. The Lord has spoken to you in any way today and that you need to come and pray about anything in your life. The altar is open as we sing together.
your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is nothing comes be to his holy name. And now may the God of peace make you holy in every way. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless until our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ comes again. Amen. 